Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the com video. Let's talk about the GTX 1060. The final specifications have emerged onto the internet, in other words, leaked. And we also have some benchmark results for the GTX 1060, which we're going to go into later on in the video. Now, um, the full specifications of the GTX 1060 are very important, but let's face it, the most important thing for us to establish is once again, NVIDIA have clarified the price point, because at the end of the day, if you can't afford it, it doesn't matter what the card can perform like. And it's 249 US dollars, that's for a non-reference, non-Founders Edition card, whereas if you want the Founders Edition, in other words, reference, it's 300 US dollars. It's basically another 50 dollars on top. Now. You can buy a Founders Edition from the folks like, at my MSI or whomever else, but of course the ultimate thing for me is that it's not really worth it. Yes, the Founders Edition does look really nice, the cooler is certainly well engineered, but just like the GTX 1080 Founders Edition and so on, it's probably not worth the extra scratch, and I would just personally stick with the standard 249 US dollars, that gives you a 6 gigabyte version of the card. A slight aside, for those wondering about the 3GB, the rumour mill is that it's going to emerge maybe a month later, possibly. Personally, I don't really feel myself that interested in 3GB, I think it's just that bit short. 4GB, I could understand interest, but 3, you know, even during my testing of the RX 480, true story, um, I think it was Batman, I actually hit 7 point something gigabytes of data on the GPU and that's just testing at 1080p. So my point being, three gigabytes? Yeah, I don't care. Anywho, uh, moving on to the actual uh, news. First thing we're gonna talk about is the block diagram because we see 80 TMUs and 48 ROPs. Now, 108 was what was previously mentioned in leaks, but it didn't really make much sense. So, 80 makes much more sense and much more in line with what we anticipated the car to really be able to perform like. But, I feel the most interesting thing regarding these announcements isn't necessarily the number of TMUs, which is more in line to what made more sense. Instead, the number of ROPs. Now... The previous generation of cards from NVIDIA, for example the 960, was limited to just 32 ROPs, whereas this pushes it all the way up to 48, which is a much more robust design. Theoretically, it should mean that the card is better at handling certain complex scenes, at anti-aliasing, and various other visual effects, and, well, let's face it, ROPs are a kind of an important part of the card. So, it's going to be interesting how that all was, uh, ends up. Now, do remember, for those of you who are not familiar with the rest of the specifications, it is built on 16nm FinFET design, 1280 unified cores, and has a base clock of 1500 MHz, but boosts up to just over 1700. This puts it at about 4.4 TFLOPs of single precision performance, and that's with 6 GB of GDDR5 and 192-bit memory bus that runs at 2 thousand megahertz so memory bandwidth is not ultra high it's 192 gigabytes per second honestly that's about what we expected and it's definitely a couple of ticks below the rx 480 which is 256 gigabytes per second because of its wider uh, bus interface now do you remember the 480 also has eight gigabytes of memory and that's the reason it does have that wider interface anyway Compute performance for the RX 480 is also higher at 5.8 TFLOPs, but compute performance, single precision, doesn't necessarily translate themselves to frames on the, well, screen at the end of the day. And also the RX 480 has a detriment of ROPs, it has 32 compared to 48, whereas the number of TMUs on the 1060 is considerably lower, it's about half the number of the RX 480, which has 144. So, with all of that said, what about the performance of the card in terms of overclocking? Well, the good news is early reports, and at the end of the day, there are very early reports, the card is hitting around 2 GHz in Heaven's Benchmark. Now, I'm not really surprised by this, because... Folks had already started to murmur, including NVIDIA, that the card was highly overclockable for A, and for B, 
it makes sense based on what we know about the Pascal architecture as a whole. It just would not make any sense whatsoever for the GTX 1060 to clock like shit compared to the GTX 1070, the 1080, when they're just clocking like demons. I mean, there was some that are folks that have managed to push it over 2500 megahertz for the 1080s. Uh, I believe there was actually the highest I remember is about 2800 megahertz, which is absolutely just bonkers. That's around a gigahertz overclock. But, anyway, um, so 2012 megahertz, which it should push up the clock speeds quite a bit over the default of um, 1700. Now, what type of performance that's going to really equate to in terms of the frames on screen, that's down for your imagination. It's quite interesting because a couple of um, Ashes of the Singularity benchmarks have started to emerge onto the internets. So, for example, uh, Extreme 1080p, you're looking at 4300, whereas 1440p, 3800, whereas 4K, which is obviously pretty damn demanding um, because the game is not exactly easy to run, you're looking at 2900 frames, uh, sorry, a score of 2900. For point of reference, if you were to mosey on over to Ashton of the Singularity's benchmarking website, and then you were to start looking at the RX, uh, yeah, the RX 480 scores, um, it's scoring around the same, uh, 4100 to 3900, depending. Next up, we'll talk about CompuBench. Now, CompuBench, of course, is pretty well known in the industry, and typically. Benchmarks for this tend to pop up before a lot of Firestrike benchmarks, which is kind of bizarre, but it just is how it is. So how does the 1060 fare? Well, you can see for yourself, it scores roughly within the same top ballpark as the GTX 970, slightly, slightly behind the uh, 980. So it's basically between the 970 and the 980, and it's very comparable to the 480. Now, if you've gone through all of this and thinking to yourself well, what the hell does that mean in terms of actual performance well your guess is as good as mine because early claims from Nvidia were that the card would be able to beat the GTX 980 whereas some of the results we're seeing this is not quite the case now my personal standpoint is that the card won't beat the GTX 980 in all benchmarks but it will in certain benchmarks I also feel the same thing for the RX 480. Nvidia were claiming that it's going to be 15% faster than the RX 480, but as I said in my own uh, previous videos, I don't feel that that's the case for all benchmarks. Just like AMD were happy to say, hey, you know what, the two RX 480s beats the GTX 1080. Um, yeah, it, if they're running in crossfire, yeah, that's true, but not always the case. So it's kind of like swings and roundabouts depending on the vendor, and obviously they're going to choose the best benchmarks based upon their card. It's also a little weird because the RX 480 has just had a driver update which has improved its performance by about 3% and sorted out the PCIe power issues. I made a video on that the other day where I went through, um, well, doing benchmarks on our own, uh, our, our own, excuse me, RX 480, and... It's definitely an improvement. Uh, I could tangibly notice the difference when I was doing some benchmarking compared to older drivers. But perhaps the biggest thing here is that I don't feel that there is a winner with these two cards. The only reason that one would choose one over the other, um, and this is until we see the benchmarks, and we will be benchmarking the GTX 1060 ourselves, by the way, but the only reason that you would say, hey, Let's go with the 1060, is if you want something like Ansel. Or, the only reason you'd go with that, the RX 480 is if potentially in the future where you wanted to grab another one. Or you were locked into like a free sync or a G-Sync monitor. Or, just plain, it was just, you know, the features that were for you. It's also stranger still, because there is one spanner in the works for NVIDIA, and that is... DirectX 12 as well as Vulkan. Now, I don't like to be that guy, but Nvidia are not performing as well at the moment for DirectX 12 as AMD. This is particularly true when asynchronous compute is used. And honestly, it's kind of coming up daisies for AMD right now because whether Vulkan or DirectX 12 ends up being the standard 
for the next graphics API. Personally, I'd rather it's Vulkan, but that's beside the point. AMD are actually really happy because asynchronous compute is becoming really well used in consoles. It's becoming standard. So it doesn't require as much work for developers to start implementing that for the PC. And Rise of the Tomb Raider, the new patch, has just added multi-GPU uh, multi support for DirectX 12 and asynchronous uh, compute support. A couple of months back, I would have said, eh, I don't know about two RX 480s, that's probably not a good purchase. But just very recently, Microsoft have said that they're going to be releasing an abstraction layer, which is going to allow developers to much more easily implement multi-GPU solutions in DirectX 12. But all of that said, in my mind, if you've got the money to buy two RX 480s at the start, you're probably better to just save up that little extra cash and go with a GTX 1080. But if you're someone who likes to keep their options open and buy an RX 480 now, maybe with 1440p in mind, but then you think, eh, three months down the line, I don't think that's quite enough, you could always go for another upgrade and with Nvidia not having those SLI fingers for the GTX 1060 which in my mind was a big mistake it does open things up plus there is a couple of extra gigabytes of memory on the RX 480 but is that going to make a difference in the long run your guess is as good as mine anyway as I said more specifically we're going to be putting out benchmarks on all this stuff anyway I'm finishing the RX 480 review over the next couple of days then we're going to be reviewing the GTX 1070 then it's either going to be the RX sorry it's either going to be the GTX 1060 or it's going to be a keyboard and then the GTX 1060 I'm not sure which it may be a keyboard first and then I'm going to go to the GTX 1060 if only for the fact that Constantly benchmarking graphics cards takes an awful long time, so I think I might have a bit of a mental break, or I'm going to have a mental breakdown. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.